Greetings mortals, I am Natus, the ruler of the underworld, and the end of the week is here, so it's time to talk about some manga chapters that we've read. I stay to work on this one. So, yeah, anyways, let's not be around the boost and get into this uh, discussion because we have a lot of them to talk about. Specifically, we will start off with Chow House getting finally getting a new chapter, which I think it's been almost a month since the last one, which is odd, since I'm pretty sure Chow House is... It's as like a more of a weekly type of thing where it's like a chapter every other other every other week. Well, a week. I think it's like a similar structure as One Piece, where it's like three chapters, there's and then a break. But for some reason, there was none for almost a month. But what can you do? I suppose it's time we talk about the newest chapter, and that is chapter 193, titled Operations End. If that doesn't sound like a chapter title that's just foreshadowing a rushed conclusion, then I don't know what it is. Like, you might as well just call it a rushed ending. Or maybe the writer was just got, finally got got tired of this arc, so he just wanted to wrap it up very quickly. I mean, I would definitely not be surprised by it. Even if not the writer, I imagine like the people behind them would probably be being that. But regardless. Anyways, we fight. We start this chapter off by finding out that the reason why um, Ram seemed to have been kind of obeying uh, Anthony in the last chapter is actually because Kate agreed to the proposals. Like we start off with Kate saying that, like, I I agreed to the proposal because I owned Anthony. I don't think that like the favor is ours. I think it's just meant more like you own it, so you should at least. I don't think the favor is out, but it's more like. I, I did do that thing for you, so I should pro I mean, if you wish to join, I should probably let you kind of thing. Like, I, I don't really know if the favor is completely gone. Like, I'll answer your job. Hey, would you mind in, in, uh, putting me uh, in part of your plan? You see, I helped you there, so you should probably let me join the help. Or whatever, because... Because, you know, it's kind of like one of those things where you have to get that help even though you don't trust him. And as well as the fact we find out, like, she did ask Anthony, Kate did ask Anthony about uh, why he wants to join. He said that there's something in the in the adult wing that he needs. So he thinks this, so he thought that this episode would help him get it, which we do find out what he was after. At least I think two things he was after, but regardless, she agreed to it. And now he's kind of regretting her action. Kind of regretting it since, you know, something off is happening with, um, yeah. With Lou and Louise, and they have no idea why anything's happening because they have like no contact. But anyways, there we have Anthony. Uh, we cut back to Anthony as he's like he was like we like timing him like exactly how long Louis said that they sh that he would take, and he is there to look at times like all right, three, two, one, all right, it's time for me to check up if everything's going well. I imagine it was also like the general mission time was important, so that's why he took it a bit more seriously. But as he goes there, he sees the monster Louise, who's kind of just like first kind of looks like she's rampaging, but she just falls unconscious. I guess the initial adrenaline rush kind of took its toll, and she just fell unconscious. And he was like surprised by. It. I think she saw him, but he, she did fall unconscious, and and he's like, huh. So this is what happens when someone's soul who that when a shadow and a a doll do not like are not in sync mentally when the, it's operation or are functioning well. A very interesting discovery as then Louis as being a douchebag he is like, oh, I'm sorry, my god, and all that. As Anthony does not know, while uh, this isn't the prefer preferred outcome, it is a good outcome for us. And I did manage to get like the main, uh, I think he got like the main coffee thing, the one that's used in the unification ritual, so now he has. Some control of that. Now, I imagine that he will try to figure out how it's produced so he could produce it more on his own and be able to, like, make unified adults um, from the children's wings be, uh, without anything, well, without needing to go through the adult wings process. Because, like, a lot of them, because a lot of children want to become, like, adults, and that's their idea. So, they can, like, this savior figure, or this person who's being very you know, hyped up and beloved, showing up, then go, I can allow you to skip the whole needless process and allow you to go straight to adulthood would probably make sense. He would probably also want, like, more of these, like, rampaging Louise monsters rummaging around, which is just a sick plot, but 
I mean, we all, we, I don't think anyone was surprised by this. But anyways, then we have uh, Shirley, uh, if you, uh, who was, got scared when, uh, because of the whole, you know, rampage uh, from Louis and Louise, as well as Anthony Olette, uh hiding herself, um, I think below one of the cards that was in the room, or bef below the safe and all that, as uh, Anthony revealed, uh, we find out from Kate about what the plan was, like how were they going to get Lou and Louise out without anyone being suspicious, like where did they go? As we find out that the plan, at least what Kate was idea idea was, that she would they would use the bones from uh, meat and chicken bones and all that you know things you get from the kitchen to make like a fake looking uh, corp to make a fake looking Louise. And because Ram can't break it on her own, they need Anthony for that. As Anthony reveals that. While it's difficult to say if that's exactly a wrong, if that's a corpse, or if they like Anthony refers to the thing that he used as as a corpse, and the hand is a normal, does look, you know, it is a hand, like it's clear. It kind of looks weird out, but it's hard to say. If that's like unification ritual, but to be fair, I think bodies are a bit more emancipated when they go on, the, they fail. You know, unification rituals. And Shirley is also scared by him, which is also the reason why she hides. It seems to actually be the main reason why she hides, because, like, it looks like he's legitimately throwing a corpse or a child, but, again, I'm not entirely certain, because the way how Kate visualized it was like a mash of bones and meat in a humanoid shape, but this is seems to be very much a human. So we have to wait and see if that truly is a person or not. I imagine we might actually get a reveal of this. I imagine, like, uh, I imagine an ad would, would definitely, like, check it closely. And uh, inspect it, what exactly happened. But, regardless, it, he threw uh, the corpse in, and then he uh, and Lewis um, just leave out because they got what they needed, and they have their goal, and they don't, did what they have to, to keep K as a part of their little game. As then we have, uh, uh, as then we have uh, Kate uh, getting uh, informed that everyone like uh, informed that uh, Candy Candy informs Kate that everything is kind of going. I, I guess in a good way, a good way where they get Lou and Louise out uh, and. The, and the children, everyone is kind of returning to where they were supposed to be. Like the children who just graduated are all now going and are all in that place. Um, Douglas uh, is now back there and he's, I think, talking to someone. I think he's just talking about a random child there. Uh, they'll probably have to clarify what happened later because I don't think they realized that Douglas did like fully accept Kate's way. Uh, but regardless, we'll they'll talk about this at next chapter one after that. It's gonna be a thing disgusting, uh, disgusting, and like ramp, but they are still more focused on their Lou and Louise part. As the, then they hear like a bit of a rampage going outside as they go check it, and then they f see that it's the fused Louise and Lou waking. I guess it, she woke up and is now going on a rampage and destroying everything and causing chaos, which kind of you know send Ram out away a bit, which because. You know, she, because, you know, she's like a, a, physically, I would say she's like the least, um, developed among the characters, and she was like, in the car, right next to her car, she was like being thrown out. It's also said that Anthony, like, uh, joined up a different group of faceless dolls, so that's the reason why he's not there, but still, like, I, yeah, it's not gonna help his suspicion, him being suspicious at all, as then we have the Louis and Louis doll fusion just destroying everything. So it doesn't even seem to be like a direct thing, it just seems to like generally like causing chaos, which it's not a good thing because you know it's kind of a problem. Because if someone can see, it, like, they're not, they're not like a, in a confined room, mind you, they're like in the I think they're in the I want to say they're in the like the connecting point between the adult wing and the child wing, but I don't even think there was like that. I think they're just on like a bridge somewhere. So yeah, I, I feel like anyone could probably just see it. Like I would honestly not be surprised if we learn a couple of chapters that 
Joseph was almost there. I was like, <sighs> so that's what's how oh, very annoying. Like I could easily see something like that being revealed because you know how open it is. Like just speaking, it's like a little bit too many things happen in a very open space when it comes to things that you should keep it under down low. But yeah, anyways, uh, because of this whole chaos, Patrick takes the initiative and goes to help L Lou and Louise, who, thanks to the fact how his suit power works, with his, I, I think he's able to, like, erase other suit powers or something to that nature, uh, because that's like, how, how he defeated Mar Mary, was it? Well, that's how he solved it. The issue is he used his power to, like, engulf uh, Louise and Lou in a giant heart, the power of love, everyone, in that her heart bang and that like dissipated that form. Now it seems like Louis, Lou, and Louis both lost consciousness. So many times he just knocked them out of consciousness, or that is, if he got rid of this form, because it would be a problem if the two of them fused into that form every time they woke up. Like they cannot be conscious. I mean, to be fair, Louis and Lou were all going to have to be in hiding, and now it's going to be even harder if they are in a giant fused state. Especially that few state is gonna be a rampaging, going to be a rampaging monster. But regardless, it's a problem for a future arc or the next arc. But regardless, they're able to uh, uh, save uh, save Lou and Louise. Don't worry, they put cloaks on them. They, we're not going to have that impl that thing anymore. As uh, if as they are happy and Patrick, I think Patrick is the one that tells. Uh, uh, Kate, you deliver the oper of this operation, so you know what you need to say. As Kate probably says, the operation to save Lou and Louise has been a success with all of them being yes, here. In yes, it's been successful. So, yeah, the operation went or uh, was resolved. So the whole situation was saved. Now, I hear some people being a little disappointed because you know how quickly this is, how quickly this resolved, and there were kind of being like no stakes. Like, one thing is, horrific things happen around children, I don't really think you need to characters to die or things, and again, we, it's unclear what ha is happening with Lou and Louise, a uh, few states, so I don't really think it's that, like, it has to be that many conflict, but it is feels kind of weird how, like, we kind of really rushed the conclusion of this, but what can I it's still going to be more of it. Like, remember, we cannot, ha like, remember, the cap. like, I think we also forgot the characters cannot fight the gut villain, the enemies they have in a conventional way, like, it's very clear the children cannot fight against the adults, the adults, like, it's very clear. So I'm not exactly entirely saying how you can put stakes without killing a bunch of children 24-7. I mean, if you go on the simple battle manga logic, but regardless, Less of that, the chapter concludes there, and then again, like you could tell it's gonna be a rush ending as soon as you read the title. But yeah, anyways, uh, then we have this time for torture, Princess. Torture chapter 231, titled Torture 231, which actually is a proper torture, or normal torture. As we uh, find out that in this torture, the only siblings or brothers or friends or whatever they are. Are uh, in charge of the torture today with Princess, and they reveal that their torture is going to be a game of tag. As the Princess is very confident in her abilities, uh, because you know, like, despite all of her many, 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 many flaws, she is actually a good combatant. Like, every time uh, there was a more standard torture in terms of combat of capabilities, she was one, or and there is, it, she lost because of some other reasons, either. Forgot that they w there was a reward to uh, if her balloon doesn't get pop, getting distracted and letting her guard down, down and having her and being defeated. Like generally speaking, combat of capabilities, the princess is dominating anyone. So the and princess knows that and informs them, "You do realize I can outspeed you." And they are like, "Yes," but unfortunately for her, they brought Sakura to join because he he's. Well, actually, she 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 is the fastest of the characters. Like she can out, she can match or at least go. She has the best chance against the princess. Similar as how like they were having I mean, that torture where they was like, okay, we are so confident that you're gonna give in that we need to keep you. 
from giving in where torture used that I had Sakura go up against her. She knew that he should get the beat on me quickly, but she could at least delay for a few seconds. So Sakura knows that and she and Princess go into their little attack fight. Which is like, you know, just a speed thing, like Sakura goes tries to attack her in, but but just is able to avoid or block her wrist with all that movement. As Princess even acknowledges, like, oh, ho, ho, this is all you can do, as she gets really confident. Which is something that Sakura was expecting, because in the flashback, we get to reveal that, uh, that how Sakura thinks it's gonna go. Expecting the plan was basically, have Sakura go up against the Princess, go initially, make it very, uh, make it appear like she's not trying much, then be like, try to fake out with, oh, no, no, I'm trying really hard. As the princess is also going to block and saying like, oh, I can give myself a handicap and win. But only for then for Sakura to go into a full speed blitz and then be able to get use that surprise for Manta for princess to be a bit enough. Wait, you are just toying with me. You're not actually going full out. And then use the opportunity to get the uh, her attacked. Because that would be... Because that way it's, it'll be a, the quickest way. Because that would be like the most quickest way. Because again, like in a proper, like full out fight, it's clear that Sakura loses to Princess. It's been established multiple times ahead. But regardless, that's how the torture ends with Princess being defeated and they win. Well, I think the title is actually like the, 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 the team beat Princess. But. But and uh, right here, Demon Girl is like very really happy about yes, yeah, like we beat her because she was a bit of a losing streak. And she goes reports this to torture. I'm assuming the princess did talk afterwards. But then torture remind asks, wait a minute, if Sakura was the one who was doing the torture, uh, because like the only thing that those two did was like say like they first wanted to participate, but they didn't saw how quick Princess and Sakura were. They were like. Yeah, it's not even worth it. We're just gonna sit here to the tree. So the torch is like, if this, if you did nothing except invite Sakura there in the silent game of tag, then then this might as well be because of Sakura to Sakura's torture because it's clear she was on the who doing was doing all the work, which is something that the girl does acknowledge. Oh yeah, that's why we did pretty much nothing. But yeah, anyways, um. That's it for this time for Torture Princess. Again, this is a very simple manga. There's not really much to go through. As then we get to peak manga. The true greatness of the manga world. That is, of course, a hundred girlfriends that really, 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 really love you. Chapter 176 titled Kurumi Goji at uh, Disney. <laughs> Funny enough, they did use Disney in this series before, but now they're feel like they have to not use it. Probably, it's probably like a thing where you can't have it overtly what you're referencing. Like, a mentioning is fine, but it's kind of like Coca-Cola. Like, you can probably match it, but you cannot use it too much. But regardless, that's how they have a kind of, you know, copyright issue a bit. But anyways, we start this chapter off on the rooftop, as we usually do, with uh, characters responding, Oh, you're going to Disneyland, Kurumi? And the guy like, oh, who else is coming with you? As we were like, maybe being a bit pounty, like, Why don't you invite me? We're the Tsundere chair. We should be all going together. As Kurumi explains to them that she doesn't want to go with anyone, because there's this whole, like, fight about attractions, like, who's going to go at what? Which is, I guess, a thing in theme parks, like, you don't want to... Like, people just want to go what is the best option and want to think they should be prioritizing the most. As Kumi explains that she's team fruit, and only fruit, so when she goes to these lands, she wants to only eat. So, it would be pointless for her to invite anyone else to go with her, because... You know, it's just gonna be one of those things. Because, you know, they're just gonna end up arguing and fighting, because the only thing Kumi wants is eat. Which is kind of a weird thing that Kurumi's parents apparently left to allow her to go alone to Dis Disneyland without anyone. Like, I, I mean, we, I mean, I know the wiki states that Kurumi is 15, but I'm pretty sure that Kurumi is younger than that. Like, I think she's actually... Okay, I'm, not, I'm not... I'm forgetting what the exact look, the exact class that Kurumi attends is, but isn't she like only two years old ahead of... Well, first... Uh, like, isn't she, like, the only two years ahead of the Chiyo and Matsumi? 
Like, like I'm pretty sure that she's supposed to be below. Like, I know for a fact she's below fifteen, but I don't know if she's like ten. Like, I think she was supposed to be eight, but Kurumi, I think, is supposed to be like ten or eleven or something like that. So it's kind of a weird thing that allow her to go alone. But do not worry, one. Renta is going with Kurumi, so it's gonna be a solo day chapter, <laughs> which. Funny enough, is something that we have Hai be very angry that Kurumi and Renta are going alone because Kurumi, because Hai would also be happy at just let going to food and to every food stall to have Kurumi uh, watch Kurumi's cute face. So yeah, this is indeed going to be a Kurumi solo day chapter, which means everyone who is pissed off at chapter 444 are now finally going to be happy about it because. People were really upset about how, like, the only solo chapter for Kurumi for the longest time was that chapter, which it wasn't really much of a solo chapter, more of a Kurumi character chapter. But regardless, they are finally able to move off from it. I want to enough, that's not even the worst. I want enough, the contests in that chapter aren't even the worst ones in the series, so I have no idea why people are so pissed off at that chapter. I guess consent, maybe. I don't know, really. Again, it's kind of a hard thing to tell exactly. But yeah, anyways, then we have uh, Kurumi and Rento going on a, like a uh, having a date and then eating like the initial start uh, start of your uh, as soon as you enter the Disneyland uh, Disneyland stall as Kuru as uh, Renta asks uh, Kuru uh, as. Uh, and to ask Kumi if she ever like takes pictures of food because you know to remember them and all that. As uh, Kurumi tells him, no, she just tastes the food because every second of tasting a food it will taste a little bit different. Like freshly always gonna have a different taste in the next second bite. And also she just gets hungry from watching pictures that she cannot eat. So it's like one of those things where you kind of have to keep getting her food. <laughs> I'm. <at> <laughs> It's actually, which, another thing we find out that she is sensitive enough that she, that food tastes different every second of a day. So this really does make me kind of wonder what kind of body Kurumi has. Like, not only is she able to eat way more food than anyone should be able to, not only does she, is it, she able to process it super quickly, she's also able to taste the difference of food for every bite taken, freshly out, second bite, third bite, fourth bite, eating everything, like, what kind of bite does she have? As well as the fact that she are triggering is literally just anything associated with food. Like, she literally got hungry over makeup that sounds similar to a type of potato. Like, can, somebody, can we examine Kurumi's body, please? please? Like, I think we do need to examine that thing. And you don't... Fine enough, Kumi, we haven't actually seen Kumi's parents, so we might actually have some kind of... Actually, no, think about it. How did Kumi get fat as a baby if she had this body from birth? Oh my god, I, I already imagine there's gonna be a chapter or something with Kumi's mother. Like, it has to be. But regardless, we didn't have... Uh, there's a couple of panels of Kurumi eating food, you know, like the one, like the very cute, beautiful panels, like, you know, her, oh, she, eat, like, she's eating, like, an ice cream sandwich, oh, she's eating some dog, oh, she's eating a hot dog, you know, it's, like, very cute panels, like, we have her, like, getting the one, like, the Uda, where she has to put her hair behind, the happy face, like, oh, like, the child, and then we have, like, a bunch of, like, the in, because there's, like, a bunch of this, in this of popcorn, we have, like, her eating every form of popcorn, and I don't even think she eats, like, as in, like, she puts a bunch of different types of popcorn in one. I think she's literally eating, like, a whole bucket of popcorn. Popcorn before she goes into a different the other type of popcorn. So, yeah, Kurumi can eat as, like, Kurumi can eat everything. As then we have Kurumi, like, looking at Renta as she's eating something. And she sees that she's, like, he's also having one, but he's, like, has a, a lot smaller, like, portions. But she's, like, um, Renta if you would be happy, uh, since we are tech, since this is technically a day, I suppose we should probably do some activities that you would be interested in. As then Renta is like, oh, if that if we are here, oh, if you are offering, I guess we could go uh, take a picture, uh, couple's picture with the matching, uh, um, 
most had ears on. Like, he's fine with doing whatever uh, Kumi wants, but, you know, it's still supposed to be a functioning relationship. Like, this is supposed to be a legitimate relationship, so he should be, so Kumi is aware that she should be allowed to do, have to do some activities that he wants. Like, even if he's fine with not doing any of his activities, they should. So he goes there, and then she's like, if you does anything more you want to do, but Renda is reasonable, he's like, oh, but but we fail, we will not be able to fill, uh, finish all the food stalls, which Kumi does know it's also the why she's only team food because she would make, because it's something she's saying in the beginning of the chapter where if she tried to eat anything out, to try do anything else, she would not be able to fit all of the stalls. But Kurumi just was like, it's fine, I'll finish it later. Uh, well, it would probably be very easy. She could probably do something like end of the school, she's like, Hi, could you go, can we go to, I want to finish the stores I did with, on Rento's date, with, on the date with Rento, so can we please go to Disneyland today? And I would do it, like, I, I imagine that Okumi doesn't even fucking have to, like, go there, she probably just has to, like, tax, like, hey, hi, hi, I would like to go, I would like to, after school, I would like to, uh, go to Disneyland with you because I didn't manage to finish every food stall with Rento. And I would like, announce, school day's over, everyone get, school day's over, everyone get out. And then, probably even send my hat just to grab Kurumi and just immediately drag her phone in the car and go to Disneyland, just so she could get all the pictures. I'm assuming that the end of the chapter, that the action is probably gonna be something with Hahari, like, just tailing Kurumi and taking pictures of her or something like that. But regardless, they they do some other activities. They have like they're like romantic dates. Uh, you know, like you know, playing laser tags, uh, like looking at different to attractions and all that. And they're happily and they end their day with uh, I'm looking over the parody of Disney Castle as they have like a romantic little kiss. It's like She's very happy about it. Like, again, I mean, it's also a chapter kind of confirms why she's at Tsundere, because she's not really happy. Like, she is really... The way she expresses it, like, differently, it's, it's not as extreme as Karana and May, who are like, well, I... It's like I want to go to that attraction with you, you baka. Or May, uh, which like, well, I am just going to that attraction with you because to check it before or I could go with my sister. Or, you know, stuff like that. But Boom is okay, like, if you want, we can go there. I'm happy that we got, like, you know, she's like, she's telling him, but it's like very awkward. So, again, it's kind of confirming why she's at Tsundere. As then we have Rento going to kiss, uh, to kiss Kurumi and I'm kissing because I think Kurumi got hungry for the kiss. I mean, we all know Kurumi does get hungry for kisses. Chapter 44 confirmed that for Guy Out Loud. So yeah, anyways, then we also end this chapter with a little Chataro moment, as they reveal that, Chata that Chataro was wearing like a, you know that thing that's like, I think it's supposed to be like done for, for like fitness, that one that like, m makes your movements very hard to move. Like, we, re we revealed that Chataro had a couple of them on him, so he would be able to um, keep up with Kurumi's appetite because remember, Kurumi eats a lot more than a person should be able to. Like she eats for several people, so she, so he needed to like keep up his strength. So he decided to just put something on him that would make him able to uh, keep up with it. So yeah, we also have, like a little Mickey Mouse reference because he does look. His face kind of looks like a Mickey Mouse, especially with the the mouse ears. So, yeah, anyways, with peak finish, it's time to talk about My Academia. And it's probably final few chapters. And as we have My Academia, chapter 423, titled One for versus All for One. I will also add conclusion or like the final no confrontation of the final strikes because, you know, it's like kind of the ending of it, of this whole fight. But regardless, but regardless, um, we just we all we start this chapter off by first confirming exactly how these hits and all that kind of work to the people who are probably complaining about. Although I don't think anyone would really be complaining about the, at this point, but regardless, uh, all for one explains to us that the reason why these hits affect and so 
big on the damage despite the danger but despite the sensory abilities as well as the regeneration is because one the body is already fucking damaged as all hell so it's not like so it's like a corpse essentially in its last legs as well as the fact that uh, all of the other people all the ones who are insignificant are still like doing something like the body is so hurt that even the insignificance are starting to do some damage. I'm starting to, you know, uh, but yeah, anyways, I can still continue to fight. Like, nothing, like, they themselves couldn't do shit, but in a proper, but against everyone out, they cannot do shit, but uh, in this scenario, when they're just, like, distracting him, they are affecting him, and they are damaging him. So, yeah, yeah. Off one is very pissed off at them because of the fact that these insignificance are actually contributing to the fight. As then we have uh, Shirokis, but it's actually starting to get destroyed. Like its shadows are complete. It, it's starting to shout to dust. As the, that uh, pisses off Off one, the fact that this that he's losing. Like after all this, these years taking quirks, manipulating all this, and this is all going to be done by these people. And he's very, very, very sore about it. And like he refuses to fall. He's like, no, I will not let your insignificance because I am the Demon King. I will get what I want. So he uh, gets. So he immediately uh, gets uh, serious about the situation. I mean, always decides to plan. All right, all right, all right. How do I escape this situation? All right, all right. Let's think about this. This body is crumbling, but everything else is resolved. All I have to do is survive this. This by giving my quirk away, and I'll take over the person's body as well as then just be able to continue you know, an issue. Because remember, there's like no one that can properly go up against awful one now. Not only does he have years of experience, he also has a lot of quirks and all that. So he's like, All right, all right. this bastard now is completely quirkless, and his body is trained to handle multiple quirks. I will just grab him, him, give him awful one and all the other quirks, so this body can die, and I'll take over him, and I'll win. Like, even if this body, even if these, even if these guys somehow manage to show that body, I will be able to use anyone else. Like, anyone here really does what I need them to do. But, in that, like, plot, is he thinks of Shirakumo, who, uh, Kogeri, and that moment realizes what the awful one wants to do, and in his, uh, as he then, Apologizes to Aizo and present Mike as his sure cool personality and uh, Kurogei personality kind of mixed together as uh, Shokumo, who was already at this fight last leg. So, the last chapter confirming he was unable to even do anything anymore, but now it's even more so because now it's so extending that he's definitely passing away. Like, I think Kurogei is definitely going to die, like a lot of the League of Villains members have, or are most likely going to be confirmed to have died. As they have Kroger going there, as he blocks it, which we first have like a bit of a mystery action with Pazamalik, where Pazamalik, I knew it! Yeah, that thing thing would still go help uh, El Crying Child regardless of his own safety. Because, like, first, it's because, like, the thing is, like, Pazamalik is very refused, was very refusing to acknowledge Kuraguri and Shirkuma as the same person. But here's, like, a thing where, yeah, Shirkuma would definitely go help. Uh, a fan like what he considers Shiraki to be as then uh, Kogori like makes like a little portal between the two so they can't really like touch each other as Shiraki uh, tells off one give Shigaraki back his friends are waiting for him which is kind of only compress, uh, compress and I guess skeptic and get any if you really want to be Technically, like, I guess you can also say Greg Dasher, but I don't. Like, I don't. For the thing is, I don't think uh, Shiraki would have an opinion of Trumpet and Greg Dasher much. Like, Skeptic could probably argue because he, they work together a lot. We could kind of say Gatten because it because it did seem like Gatten and Compressor at got along somewhat together. Uh, I mean, Spinner is a fucking is prob a potato now, while Toga and Dami are probably dead, but. Uh, it's the sentiment that counts. It's the words themselves, not the actual how serious you can take them. But yeah, anyways, then we have um, 
But anyway, in those final embers, uh, Kroger is still not able to like do again much. Like again, he was at his last legs, and now he's l using all these last legs. No, no, he's essentially just getting himself in there. Like this isn't you be having one foot in the grave. This is him. All right, just grabbing, getting himself in the grave, and starting digging himself inside it. That kind of thing. Like, no, I'm digging so Like, now he's uh, like grabbing the rubber and throwing it on top of him. Trying to kill himself with that. Or whooping, whooping rubber on top of him. On, well, and dirt and all that stuff for his grave. But do not fear in that moment because Bakugo, for some fucking reason, probably just to end the chapter, uh, chapter just to end the final battle in a more poetic way because, you know, show to participate, so it should be only right that Bakugo also participates this. But regardless, Bakugo shows up uh, as he's uh, blasts uh, off arms away again. As for some saying, dude, you should really be in a hospital right now. You're way over extended. You already use all of your energy by defeating off arms, main form, buddy. You really should not be here. But Bakugo doesn't really pay mind to him because what he focuses on giving Izuku the final like of encouragement, telling him, do not let me surpass you here. Beginning, like, you know, taking all the credit and all, as uh, then the uh, Bakugo blows uh, off from away, which allows uh, Izuku to go for another hit to finish, to finish uh, this off on off as Izuku makes a declaration and saying, I will not forgive you for your actions. What you've done is irredeemable and cannot be, and will never be forgotten and excused. But I know for a fact, but there's one thing that I do know about you all for one, that is you are not a some kind of unfeeling demon king, because at the end of the day, you're just a lonely man. Which is kind of like making, kind of making fun of all for one. I think it's like one of those things where it's like double poeticness about a villain's defeat, like all for one the whole time was like, like, oh, I am demon king. I'm great. I'm above you. But at the end of the day, he's like a more pathetic thing when you actually think about it. And his obsession with Ruichi kind of confirms that. Like, you're just lonely. Like, it's not, you know, I don't think it's meant to be taken in like a sad way. Like, we are supposed to have empathy or something. Like, no, no. It's more like Aizen's thing. Like, oh, Ichigo had like a. I think it was at the end of the Aranka arc where Ichigo was like, he kind of tried to figure out what. I, Aizen was a bit more like he was probably feeling lonely. He probably didn't feel like he had equals and all that. But then it's like you kind of doubt it. So I think it's kind of going the same route with Awful One, where like, yeah, you kind of, there's probably some aspect of that that's true, but it's really more to make us look more down on him here. Like, I don't like how lonely he truly was and much was an issue for him is one thing. Uh, Thing, but when it comes down to it, all for one is not really that isn't really any like and then just to make him look more pathetic. It's like the same reason, like you're not a demon king. It's not meant to be like it's just meant to make us look more dull on him. As then when all for one is this vestige world, he hears Yuji's voice because Yuji is like this like little flame, like you know that like little symbol like amber and the flame they're constantly using the torch. Uh, I'll go Technology, like we have Yuji as there being like, Well, it looks like it's done for us, brother. I'm sorry that I failed you and I couldn't bring you out of your darkness. It was truly my failure. Like, Yuji is aware of what's going on. He's just like, He's just been like, Yeah, everything's over. Uh, at least now we will be able to finally pass our away. Like, we are way too fucking old here. Like, we've. Like, we've survived more centuries, like, we are literally the first, we are literally from the first generation of work users. We really should have died a long time ago. Like, Yuichi, I don't know why, but the way Yuichi sounds, like, in, in this conversation, sounds really like he is completely, like, chill, like, yep, it's finally time. You know, it's been too long, you know that, old brother? As Ulf one doesn't care about it. He just grab like, he just has, holds his is Yuji's ember like no show me your face form it I wanna see you I love you brother as Yuji just tells him you know you see the thing about the messages is while these were incomplete I can't really form anymore in which is the reason why I'm not here in the form like I cannot I do not have enough power enough of me is remaining so I could make a form 
is he also has um, there are some other things that are woken. Some quite um not me. And it's see and it's time for them to take their what their you, the things you've done, it's time for you to pay your dues. As we see like all the rest of the vestiges as well as Shigaraki all starting to form their fists as they are punching all start punching off in the vestige world, which is put side by side with uh, Izuko punching the Shiraki body and off one in the real world. As we have Shiraki's and uh, Deku's fists colliding in it, something like this, like one, they completely crush them together. And finally, rem finishing off one in spread level. Which, okay, to be fair, I was kind of thinking that the face mask was gonna be like a thing where all for one, well, where Ichiraki destroying him or something like that, but I feel like this makes far more sense of both sides of the same coin destroying all for one, the one that's considered to be the greatest evil of them all. As then we have, as then we have all for one finally being killed. And after they get rid of all for one, we have Ichiraki and Deku having their final conversation. Uh, Shigaki is like, well, I guess I truly am a failure of a villain and just a crying boy, I guess. I mean, he was right at the end of the day, I couldn't even destroy your fucking arms, which I guess is the reason why the, the arms were brought back for Izuku to, like, show that Shigaki and I couldn't even finish it, like, something that's acknowledged, like, one of those, it is, there, it's for the purpose. Like, even though he should, by all accounts, have been able to destroy the arms, he didn't. And to kind uh, of make him look down, as uh, she, uh, that could tell Sam, in more like this, good way, it doesn't move their reasoning. It, no, you would never, the type of person that would commit, well, that would, that would uh, cause as much harm. And the one thing I really wanted uh, to do was to help you to stop your hatred, stop your rage, Stop your wrath, and for that I don't need to forgive you. I just need to you to choose a better path in your death. It's kind of like similar to Darth Vader, honestly. When you think about it, the way like, yeah, he did horrible stuff, and they will never be forgiven, they'll never be forgotten. But in the last moment, he saved the galaxy. In the last moment, he decided to see his son's uh, face, even if he just gets rid of any hope he has of. Surviving, it's what he chooses at the end, which is preferred. But uh, he chose compassion ending the animal than just survival, and that's kind of similar with Chiaki here, where he what he chose at the end was the correct thing. Even Hobo Star, that will not be forgiven or for, forgotten, true, but at least he, at his final moments, he chose the right thing to do. As then Shigaki tells him it before he disappears in the vast, uh, his vast disappears, saying to, saying to uh, Daku, if Spinner is still alive, please tell him that Shigaki went, died fighting for what he to destroy everything, which is a very nice sentiment because you know Spinner and Shigaki kind of felt like the best friends, like the duo, like. While Dobby was kind of more like the right hand man in a lot of ways to Shiraki, it was Spinner who was like the closest friend, like the true friend. Like, it's kind of like one of those things where, like, yeah, there's a hierarchy of command, but Spinner is the one that truly matters to Shiraki. When it comes to, like, or right, who do I s you see Shiraki ruling side by side as his right hand? It's Spinner. He is the guy who's he got playing games with, he's his most devoted follower. He is the one that matters the most to Shigaraki of the League of Villains. So, yeah. It makes sense like you mentioned Spinner, as Daku tells Shigaraki, no, I'll tell him that you fought everything you need, you destroyed everything that you need to destroy, being all for one. In a very big emotional moment. Which, to be fair, is mostly gonna be a potato stage Spinner, so I imagine we're going to have, like, a scene where we're gonna have, like, a uh, after, like, I, I imagine, like, after Izuku gets uh, uh, allowed to get out of the hospital, like, when he's staying in the hospital, he always asks, oh, by the way, where's Spinner? What happened to him? Because I imagine there will be updates. I imagine the next chapter will have, like, updates for who is that, what's the status of everyone and all that. 
all the ones we know there the no that all the ones we you know it's not up to in the air and it's gonna be oh he is a uh, potato now we don't know what to do he's in the villain's wing as that will probably request and he was gonna go there probably tell him about what happened and then like maybe maybe they're planning on putting spinner off his misery because he's just a potato now so they are gonna, but so uh, so before that deck was set, tells him that has been a, like does have a reaction like maybe he has like a smile and tears and smile coming out of it even though it's like not enough like he shouldn't by own counts have anything like that that but even but he's able to master that much and then maybe he's gonna pass off away like again like I don't really know like I don't know, maybe I'm being too bleak on about but I feel like that would probably be the best way and we'll see how things are going to result. And then, anyways, after all that, we cut to the main real world as we see Daku uh, uh, resolve his attack with Shiraki's body just being a bunch of dust in the wind and in the conflict and, and in this war. So, yeah. Now, I did some checking, as I said I will, for the chapters, and I've discovered that from chapter 40 to Izuko to the last chapter is about where the chapters go for volumes in my for MHA. So that whole thing, the whole um now so all the content in the last couple of chapters is going except for the last one is gonna be its own volume, with this chapter and the previous one most likely being the final volume, which leaves us about nine or so chapters just left. Now, I don't think there's any confirmation about how many chapters my academia has. And to be fair, my academia focuses on these things a little bit more than a lot of series do, so there could very likely be more chapters to wrap up the story, wrap up the conflicts, wrap up to give more. Like, we could have multiple, we could have an entire volume just wrapping these stuff up, and we could still have a few chapters left for the epilogue. So, I think the most likely option is this is going to be the final volume, unless if this is, they are really gonna try to make, the, unless they have really tried to stretch things out for this how they are going to end the story, which I don't think so. I feel like the next chapter is gonna wrap up like all the unnecessary loose ends, with the next couple of chapters like wrapping up the whole endeavor storyline, the more emotional beats, which I feel like it's just the endeavor storyline. Honestly, like that's the one that honestly is the only one that could have multiple chapters. It needs to be. Focus on wrapping up. I guess Aoyama's storyline as well. But then we have... Uh, I'm guessing the epilogue. I'm, I'm assuming we're probably gonna... Like, I'm assuming the final chapter is gonna be the epilogue with everyone. Like, I'm assuming, like, Deku maybe is going to get, like, a more... Better armor because it's gonna be revealed that after the whole thing. And when it's off one, fighting All Might, they kind of, like... Took the g gadgets a bit more seriously in the development. Because remember, the world does not take gadgets that seriously. Like, they're good. And you good and useful for students, but most of the, like, bigger world, they don't really ha use them that much. Unless if we give some kind of BS power, or airy power up away to get the rid of that. I mean, I guess you can also have, like, the overhaul conclusion to the airy overhaul arc with him fixing airy square thing, but regardless, I, again, I think the next couple of chapters are going to be it's either going to be one vol the win the final volume, which is going to have more chapters than a regular volume does. Probably something on the lines of like that uh, Spider-Man fake rat chapter or volume length. I could always see something like that happening. Or we are going to have like two more volumes for the story. Or we're gonna have like two more volumes, but one's gonna be a lot shorter than the, it should be. Or a lot shorter than it would regularly be. It's, that's the, I feel like what's going to happen, like, I, I don't really think we have more than that, like, I really feel like in a couple, pretty soon we're going to have, like, the announcement, MHA is in its final few chapters, similar to how, like, Eden Zero has been, I believe, after the latest chapter announced, it has, like, only five more left. So it's, like, after this week's, in this chapter, we have only five more uh, Eden Zero chapters. But, yeah, anyways, uh, the, after MHA... We have a series that's probably not going to be concluded for a while, at least. And that is the Four Nights of the Apocalypse, Chapter 150, titled, Hope of a New Generation. 
Because in fact, most of the new generation is already fucking underground. I am not entirely certain how much help there is. But, alright, alright, alright. Anyways, um, we start this chapter off with the reactions by captives over Nauseans being able to control this, uh, spirit spear. Uh, well, spirit spear. Uh, is that kind of surprise, like, being a kind of... Nauseans, what are you? I guess this is like, I guess, <laughs> like the weird thing is, everyone's kind of seems to be kind of aware the Nauseans is their, is their brother, so I guess they're more shocked the fact how skilled he is able to get it already. But, uh, anyways, Nauseans uh, sends the spear back at, uh, back at Wildan, but Wildan just dodges it, like it's not like, she actually doesn't, she doesn't use the whole in avoid thing. Probably because she's more surprised that someone else can use it outside of King. But King immediately reminds her that he's her opponent. He's the, like, the one who she's supposed to be fighting against. As he takes over and like does a, a bunch of all of these attacks. Which she, again, dodges in the normal flying way. Not certain why she didn't just use the whole relocate kind of thing. But maybe like maybe the boost from, it, from the sacred trees now making it so she can or something. But we, but regardless, uh, less, less the sacred tree uh, again boosts its power and makes the spear stronger, which is strong enough uh, to um, well. Okay, first, Worldane uses the perfect cube to uh, hit, uh, get the hit uh, to block the damage, so she doesn't get hit. But then uh, the sacred tree boosts the spear that the king made. And that one is able to destroy Waldane's uh, perfect cube, as well as severely damage, <laughs> severely damaging her arm to a point that she falls down to the ground. And King and everyone thinks kind of like she's down and out. Where King is like, uh, "All right, we have done. All right, the dragon you should help." As he goes to get it, but Waldane. Uh, is still conscious and grabs her, her remaining hand because the water is blooding her. She's kind of like, don't think I'm done by this. As, it's like one fun thing, like, Wolverine's arm seems to be barely hold on. Like, I think this amount of muscle is like connecting her arm um, still, and she's like, is still moving at normal, and she's still like holding it. And she's like, I, like, I mean, she feels like has a movement of it. I think, like, the normal arm, the one that's not damaged at all, is, like, holding it. But then, like, the few remainants of her arm are still able to, like, have her being moved in that position to blast him. Like, but luckily for King, uh, she misses as she hits multiple times, but enough of that is working, which everyone's kind of confused. Like, they're never making fun of it. They're, like, confused. Like, I have no idea why you're missing so embarrassingly right now. As Nazians reveals to her that death, it, that is uh, the new Venom he concocted, Venom Melagalant. Nice to see it being referenced. Um, but, uh, you know, I remember the ending of the first season, Melagalant, uh, she was like a. The Melagalant was like Venom to have everyone move differently and wrongly and up and side and down. That's what World Day is doing right now. Like, everything's kind of going blurry and she's kind of like falling or even on her ass because of it. Like, she's not aware of it. I'm assuming it's more like the shock of the situation that's making her be so close. Well, I imagine she would be able to deal with it normally. But yeah. As then we have Nauseans and King like using all their power combined from the Sacred Tree, which is something that the uh, Nauseans meant. Like he mentions that oh, there's something screaming in his ear as they always tell him, oh, that's definitely the Sacred Tree talking to you. As you know, we have the yeah, I'm also being very happy that he's the son, but regardless, no, they have to like finish it off like father, like son. When Nauseans and uh, Nauseans and King uh, sang this attack at Waldane, which funny enough, Waldane is not really sh like. Okay, right, Waldane's reaction to this is like, I knew this wasn't easy, but even this is uh, but this is unexpected. As we end the chapter off with her getting hit like a pretty good size into her, like I want to say like all the way here. With the sacred uh, giant sacred trees, as we end the chapter off in that. Now, some people rightfully pointed this out. This could be an odd Chandler situation with us thinking uh, Waldane is defeated here, 
because, you know, they always look like a very good, like, way to defeat her, like, she's poisoned, she, yeah, like, a, like from a very important, in very important, like, plant creature thing, uh, getting a power boost and her being struck by that, but, and the fact that she has, but it's also very likely that she's just, um, like, a misdirection, like, some people said, oh, this is just, like, one-tenth of her real power, and it's gonna be revealed in the next chapter, which does make sense, she, she, since, since, she does have, like, a weird storage space thing, because, remember, when we first saw the cloak forms of, uh, well, then, there was, like, 12 of them, only for them to reveal, like, there were a hundreds of them behind you. Six deaths until she formed fully here, so it's possible like she is. This is also like just one of the many forms, so it could be like next chapter we find out. Oh wow, you took down one tenth of our full form. Here are the remaining nine. Good luck with that. So I could see something like that, or maybe some kind of reveal. Like again, it's kind of difficult to say because in this situation, I feel like they do have a kind of fire, and if Golden is like fully. Yeah, well, I don't, like, the thing is, I don't think King, Diane, and all the children are going to die right now. I think it's too soon, so I think it's gonna be some time before then. But I could see, like, I, it's, the, the thing is, Diane's power set doesn't really work in a way that would grant him to, like, you know, the world to the, a reason to escape or something like maybe like I, I'm like maybe I could see it be revealed that like maybe there's like one extra member Waldane and she's just able to like recall like uh, one half or something of her pot or like one six or something but and, but the eye is still able to overwhelm her because you know the eye hasn't really participated in the fighting parts too much right now so I could see something like is that but that form is still too limited to fight the eye that's maybe why she uh, goes away, because she, like, it's difficult to say, because if she does dominate anyone, I feel like she will just kill everyone. Like, she is definitely cold blood enough to do so, so, again, it's kind of difficult to say. But regardless, we're gonna see if Waldane's going to be defeated there, or if it's just gonna be another Chandler situation, or something like that. But anyways, uh, with that out of the way, let's go to the series that has probably, like, the clothes, probably going to, know, that we know is not going to be Around for many for much longer, and that is Eden Zero, chapter 288, titled If We Could Be Friends. What a cringy chapter title! But, anyways, uh, we start this chapter off with where we left left off that time priestess creature thing, and she says, I'll create a big bang as she's now like starting to absorb and reducing producing so much energy that she's like creating the same time that would. You know, give a birth to a universe, putting her mainly in like the some of the highest tiers of power that the anime will has. Not the highest, but you know, like you in the universe destroying that tiers. Uh, as uh, Shiki tries to reason with her, telling her, "Wait, if you destroy everything, then you're not going to get the time you want. Even if you rest even if everything gets restarted again, it's just going to." Be a different world, and you will not be able to get back. Uh, as then uh, this time creature thing is tells to him that, oh, it it doesn't matter. I've accepted at this point that my time is not coming back. Back, it's over. Like I'm, I've done this cycle. I'm not doing what you want me to because I've done the things you want me to do now with eating mother over and over and over again. The plan itself is weird, but it always gets introduced to Earth. It always comes back. It always, it always happens. At this point, the Big Bang is the only option. Which does kind of make sense. It's, I don't think the previous versions had like... Like, remember, the plan is bring back Earth and then go there with all the advanced technology to make, make it so they'll be able to uh, fix all their world's issues. Which is probably... Which, body and love means the Mashima is the only writer who can actually write civilization with these uh, aspects because let's be honest of comic books do not do these these types of information well at like at all so it's kind of funny that Mashima of all writers is going to fix the biggest issue with having real world issues in the same universe with 
People who can literally this uh, who are literally messing with the Bing Bang power. But yeah, anyways, as she's saying this, Shiki will not allow her and saying he will make her understand that they the possibility of saving the world and mother and all that, as he uses his overdrive form, uh, the first one we've ever seen, as he's starting to suck the power that she's emitting from her body towards himself to uh, tell her, to tell her, at which surprises the time priestess cat thing about like how he's able to absorb this much even gravity itself shouldn't have this much power but he says that he will that he will show her the world that he's trying to create and that he if he, she's not going to go willingly she's, he's going to force the corner fetch to eat mother as he uses the power that he absorbed I also think she was going up towards him to, like strike him and to prevent him but he just uses power to slam her to the ground, and then that also sends the main corner face down towards mother. Uh, as Shiki uses her power to redirect the thing to going towards the corner face. As Ziggy and Rebecca seeing this, as he's like, Oh shit, we have to get you out of here, this is dangerous. As Shiki, Shiki goes there, and I don't think we see the thing like corner face eating mother, we just see mother like this slowly disappearing. As Shiki says that, as Shiki, Shiki then ends the chapter of telling this uh, time priestess cat thing, that, that you know what, I think you and me could be friends. Friends, and uh, that she's a bit confused by this, like, what? Uh, wait, why Why would you want to be friends with me of all, like, we barely even know it, I literally just, like, what? As he said, well, well, they think this is probably your um, future wife or anything else, uh, Shiki, because, uh, you know, they're very real possibility that this is just future Rebecca of some time or something. But regardless, we have this chapter ending with Shiki telling her this, referring to the beginning of the chapter, and that Corner Fetch going to eat it. Which I'm going to assume is going to go through. Like, I mean, there's still a possibility that Void will show up. Like, I, I could totally see, like, the next two chapters, especially with how quickly Mashima wraps up these conflicts uh, or fights uh, or in uh, in his series, that there's gonna be like a void showing up in the next chapter, and then like a issue for one or two chapters at most, and then like the final two chapters are gonna be the epilogue or something like that. Like, I could easily see this be like wrap up very quickly. Since like, I think after the chapter, there's only like five chapters, so how much more we can do, and especially, and where it says like Marshmallow, I feel like it, the epilogues are more likely to happen, so like maybe a Two, uh, three chapters of this conflict, and then two chapters of an epilogue, though it could be like the other way around, like two more chapters of this conflict, and then epilogue, epilogue, or like, maybe I could see like a next chapter kind of uh, leaving off with a cliffhanger, then like an explanation of what the hell is going on, then the conflict resolved, and then the final two chapters epilogue. I, I could see something like that happening, but yeah, we'll see on that side of things. But anyways, uh, with Eden Zero the way, it's time to talk about Chain Soldier. Chapter 132 titled, Unexpected Concern. I mean, accurate, but, I mean, just accurate. Like, this is the most accurate chapter, I would say, in this entire, in this entire week. So, yeah, anyways, we uh, start this chapter off with, uh, uh, Himalai being praised by her mother and grandma. Like, Good job, uh, Himalai, for being, you know, a candidate. For what she did against the gods of thunder, as well as being praised by the command supreme commander, and yeah, so the reason why Himawari and Yuki are there is, is to train and you know get a bit stronger. You know, it's like this in between arc character build up training kind of thing that uh, Chen Soldier does a lot of times. C kind of surprised that we are going immediately to this one because you know we had that with P P Pasha, and then we had like the whole. Last chapter, who was kind of more like the main story build up, and now we have another. The, I, I'm going to assume like five or so chap. Like I'm assuming in the five chapter range, chapter focusing on this training. But I don't know. I'm not like exactly sure how this is gonna go. But whatever, we'll see how this goes. I mean, to be fair, most of this probably just to get us some Azuma family fan service because let's be honest, ourselves. 
Fubuki Azuma is one hell of a milf. But we got as we find out in this chapter that uh, that Azuma uh, how Azumas have been training and how all of them have potential to become uh, captains. Like the Branch family member, the one that was a human voice opponent before for her, she fought her mother, is really good at, is really building up her speech. She's like really training her speed, which I don't think is a power. I think it's like some kind of like action and movability kind of thing. Like you can, she can like type things, a certain type of action, and then that she'll be able to perform that in a really quick pace or something. But again, okay, it is speed. It's, um, the girl kind of discourages her for speed, but she's like, alright, even if she's the fastest in the world, she could definitely be Captain Material. I feel like the uh, Zuma Grandma has got underestimating speedsters, but regardless, I mean, at least she acknowledges if you're the fastest, you could definitely become a Captain. So at least that's the thing. As uh, they are also looking at Yachiro and Himawai, as they've already praised Himawai, but they explain that Yachiro, despite her not doing much or being much, has been working her time ability, and she can now increase her stamina and able to do that for long periods of time and probably some other changes. I'm assuming we're gonna see those improvements in the future arc, or very soon, like, I don't know. It's again kind of difficult to say how the next arc is gonna go in terms of who, everyone who's gonna participate in it. But if your children is gonna participate in it, which, funny enough, except for the speeds, so everyone should be, in my favor about the vice captains, captains and vice captains being in that competition, that election, I could always see these two participating in it and do and showing the result of their training. So yeah. Yeah, Jiro is improving greatly. But Fubuki is um, now a bit getting a bit concerned about her eldest daughter, which is Maya. As Maya is wondering why is she like the one that you're worried about? Like and I perform Mendo as well, which is something she's even apparent by the fact that you say she isn't doing well. Uh, so Rook explains to her, oh no no, you are performing your duties well as a secret as my secretary, my personal sister. It's like I will not replace you, it's just You know, your sisters are doing so much better and being in talks with uh being in, in the next captains, as uh, even the I mean even the branch family is able is very prom has a very promising future as a captain, but you are just you know, you're not doing anything. Like even your ability seems like the type of, uh, like, even your ability is not really exactly in giving me good feelings about it. As the Infobuki also reveals that she's aware that she's a VTuber, I guess. Not really a thing I would expect Maya to be for V... I don't know, I don't know if we get VTuber vibes from her. But that's apparently what she is, as uh, it, she reveals that she discovered that because... Your t word, the words that VTuber use are very fancy lady, and that's what you are. So it's kind of a thing. Like, we don't mind you being a VTuber, but it is concerning that you seem to be more focused on VTuber than being an, in, in your mid to the fan scopes training and all that. I mean, even your power is also revealed that it's kind of like you want to be uh, held up by someone greater than you, with how it's like a giant hands and, you know, kind of moving like the great hands from. Super Smash Bros. So it's like kind of a concern how you always seem to be behind everyone who knows and you seeing them as their father. So they want uh, so the Fubuki and her grandma decide that would be for the best that they like test out the abilities and to like see, see how well she's doing. Which is I think mostly just to flash on my ass character a bit because we haven't really gotten like a focus. Like, not saying she has got nothing, it's just... I would say the Branch family had way more focus on developing of her personality than Maya had in that arc. And Maya, despite her Maya being, I think, more than her, she hasn't really stand out. She was just like a secretary, as they said. So now they kind of want to flash out Ma Maya's character with this test that's going to be... The test that's going to work. Yuki's going to play the hostage. Maya is going to have to find him in their, this in their island thing. They have uh, and keep him safe and get him all the way to the outside world. Probably something like a uh, safe version of the uh, of the Mato thing where they had like you know they, you have to enter the Mato, uh, save, find the the people who got stuck in the Mato, save them and get them to out and get them to safety. And that's kind of like what that is. And you 
he's going to participate in it, and he says for his participation, he's going to get the reward of, you know, having fun with the Azuma family, which is, I mean, I mean, this isn't the first time we had the grandma throwing around the ideas of, uh, you know, him finding, doing it with all the Azumas, but it's just kind of a weird thing. Which also kind of raises the question on where exactly is the father and the grandfather in all this. Because, like, even if though their opinions on the matter do not matter, you would still think they would at least, you know, Yuki should at least be like, Okay, is it- are your husband's fine with me doing all this? Like, I mean, I know they, it doesn't really matter, it's your opinion that matters at the end of the day, but, you know, you would kind of think they should at least be aware of the, this happening. But, regardless, they don't care what matters to you at this point, just to get the fan service, like, find out that Fubuki apparently has, like, a pearl uh, thigh underneath her normal thighs. Well, on her need for normal uh, panties. <laughs> I guess to always be horny, especially since the fact that she's kind of, you know, the one who's like more of a combative one. Like, straight up melee fighter, but of the uh, cap of the captains, but regardless of that uh, implication. Uh, we go to the task as we have uh, y Yuki just standing there. I'm not certain if he's going to go be landed to Maya. I mean, it's not like he's been landed to every single character, not to mention that he doesn't have. Himawai, so unless they deal with Himawai, and that somehow results in him, um, her getting uh, Yuki, or like maybe Himawai gets the thing around Yuki, but then uh, he, he, Maya knocks Himawai down, she takes the chain, and now she has the control of Yuki. I don't really know why Maya would get the Yuki as a test thing, but regardless, we're gonna still probably get some fan service from that later. But yeah, anyways, after the start of Training uh, the task, we have Maya with talking to Yuki about uh, finding Yuki as she uh, as they uh, as she frees Yuki because she's tied to a tree as they begin ready to leave. As uh, they see some weird like mutant that scorpions appearing, as Maya's like, Oh, they must have invited people from outside of the family to participate in this, which I still think that we are going to have, like, the other members of the family participate in it, so, like, the main roadblocks. Like, these outsiders that were hired are more, like, just get, will probably be that just had powers that would make them be, uh, you know, the cool kind of replica Shokai, Shuki is, uh, attacks and things, while the main family are gonna be, like, the real roadblocks. It'll be, like, sh these mini things are, like, mini Shokai, while they Azuma family are like the mini gods of thunder kind of deal. But luckily for me, as powers, they're just for these like flying and the uh, other opponents, they're just like create. Uh, she just uses her ha giant hand creation uh, for her and Yuki to fly up in the air as there's like a giant, I think, bird shook replica shook, I think, uh, charging in them. But Mia just goes head first to deal with this thing. So yeah, and that's. Gotta be like a, the next couple of chapters of them just training with Maya. Again, I ain't mad. Like, I don't know if this is gonna be taking that long because, like, I don't really think we need, like, a single chapter to focus on everyone. Like, I don't think we need a chapter focusing on her being the branch family girl. I don't think we need a chapter focus on Maya the Finger Chiro. A chapter focus on her being him Y. A chapter her focus on being her mother and grandma. Like, I don't think we need. Stuff like that, so I'm not entirely sure how the long this is going to be, especially since it's supposed to be training. And I feel like most writers do want to keep the training portions of their story at least relatively short, or at the very least not uh, very long. Like, although I guess we could spend this being like a very like how many chapters is of the current, the next volume? I mean, I mean, I mean. I guess I could see it being like long enough to justify Maya having her own volume cover but so that I don't think we are really gonna focus on this too much. Unless it's gonna be like a One Piece thing where we have like, uh, most of this chapter, n chapters are gonna be focused on Maya's test, but then we gotta like cut away from them to focus on like other factions to see their like, before we go to the election, we're gonna have other factions doing stuff, like we have Omo Agency finally getting some uh, flashing out, like, seeing what they do discuss and talk about in front. Um, we're gonna have the A Gods of Founders talking about what they're gonna do next. I could even see Yoki Sisters group doing something. Like, I could see that be like the main piece 
while this is just like, something for the ca main characters to do in the background kind of thing, but we have to wait and see it for that side. But yeah, anyways, after the Chain Soldier, we have versus Chapter 16, titled Parasitic, Parasitic Threat. So I guess we'll be focusing on the Parasites a bit. Which, I'm not really surprised, because a lot of people actually did think that Parasites were in the, uh, were in the Lawless region in the end of the last chapter, and it's kind of just confirmation that Untitled it is, that's what's going to happen. But anyway, so we start this chapter off where we last left it off with Zybe's group reacting to the humans uh, fight infighting in the Lawless region. As we see like uh, one human like grappling another as that other human is revealed, is starting to have like a parasitic uh, release from his body as it's like trying to attack which surprises like one as it strokes the one that there was uh, in the uh, that was like being grappled with their wrestling a bit, as then some of the other the lawless humans start firing at that parasite and knocking uh, as they're trying to blast it one another and shoot it out. As then we have, uh, I think they do kill the lawless do kill that parasite uh, human. As then we have the cosmic guy uh, going the gates because. They do realize now. Well, they can assume these are the lawless humans that the, they were worried about. As the cosmic guy is kind of again being very arrogant about this, as he knocks, shoots uh, the lawless humans in, in a stunt with his blast in a stun mode, as that knocks them out. As he's like, Puh! fighting between fighting those cosmic aliens, friends, fighting these these lawless is a breeze. I'm honestly I'm jealous, getting jealous of the lawless less humanities version enemies. With how easy they are, which like one, it's their world, so they're not gonna have inferior technology to you guys because of the different worlds, but whatever. And two, a lot of threats have like different levels of enemy, like not every real opponent is gonna be the same. Like aliens have this. It, you have those like mini spaceships, and you have the mandrakes, and then you have that giant. Actually, no, you have the man. You have those little ships. Then you have those giant ships, and then you have the mandrakes. Demons have a hierarchy. Okay, robots have a hierarchy of the robots. Like there is clearly a hierarchical structure in all of these. So I don't really know if you knocking, having a few of these lawless unconscious is really a good judge of strength. Especially considering the weapon that the uh, Lawless that we see at the end of the chapter is going to have. But regardless, I'm pretty sure this guy is going to be eating his words. Like, I could easily see him, like, being a character who always, like, talks big about Mandrake, but always ends up being no diff by the other enemies. Like, he talks big, but it's nothing kind of deal. Similar to, like, that other cosmic guy was like, Oh, we'll use these slaves to put them in a place! But then, uh, the sound just in the place, but only for the giant to me like jump off, be like you're boring, and squash him completely. Like, yeah, you may have better technology than them, and you may view them like savages, but they are stronger than you people. So we have him. Late, so I could totally see something like that being a trend. But anyways, the threat, is, immediate threat, is resolved. As when then we have um, the guys from the parasite world. Uh, Fi lover and the uh, general guy coming up and saying, No, that, that was a parasite. Let me, and then we get like the dumb information dump on the parasite, like how they work, how the A, they have like they ha the parasites give eggs to you and you, and then they hatch, and then you turn to a parasite. You can't really tell which one it is. Like the only signs are very minimalistic, like it's just something. You will stretch yourself. You might act more violent, but you can't really tell if you are a parasite or not just from that. As they also said, yeah, the fire fire is their weakness, and I do think the lawless did use the fire against the thing. But it's not but it's not so much that the issue comes from them uh, having just them touching you, it's more like their spores, the eggs coming into your systems. So yeah, we then 
as then uh, the other general, the guy who's kind like, I want to say he's been put in charge of the of the leader of this, of the humans, but it's more the, if I had to describe it, the general in the, the general from the machine world, I would say he's more the, he's the neutral source who has the most amount of experience, so he by default should be like, logic speaking, he should be the one in charge because everyone else is kind of like, way over their hat. Like, even the other military guys are not high enough rank to be considered good enough for the position. So, the general's questioning them, like, is there more to it? Are you sure there's, that there's so little we can you, you, that you can tell us? As the guy, who I'm assuming is the, the file of a superior, tells, says, uh, uh, or shows uh, some of his bills, as the file of is like, which we tell them that, as he tells her. If we don't tell him later, we're just gonna manage to damage the trust. So this guy's, like, aware. Again, like, this guy... While I'm saying that he's a low rank um, to, the, to the machine world, he probably is reasonable. Of, all right. From my, our perspective, we should know what's going to happen. These are the pills. We have them. And the way they work is the white pills, in case if we're going somewhere where we'll be in danger of getting infected or we, like, have to go somewhere where we could be getting infected. We use these pills to put on ourselves to be immune to it so we do not get infected by it. But the black pills are the suicidal pills. Pills, so if, if, someone, if someone does figure out that they are infected, they could just chop these in and kill them themselves. And we also, he also states that these pills, because of their uniqueness, like, they're not a good option, but they are an option that can be used. Uh, so, you, so, so, in our, their world, they've been fighting and killing each other over these. We're just telling you, not because we're going to give you them, we're just telling you so you will not be, so we will not have trouble later. But regardless, we're not, but that's all. As then the machine general guys, like, we will still have to build on trust. The fact that they kept that hidden and only revealed it now because they act, because they think later there will be an issue if they, they reveal it. Well, regardless. As then uh, we have uh, some members wanting to go help the girl because, you know, she's kind of, you know, she's hurt, she's uh, chained, and she's kind of just laying there. As then we have the guy from the Kaiju world being like, nah, it's fine, we should leave her. So if that's how affected these powers at all, then I guess we should just leave her there. She's probably infected as well, so let's go. And then we have that guy's little sister uh, jumping in. It's like, hey, what the hell? Hey, don't be a lazy slob. Like, even in this crisis, you're in like this. We should help her because, you know, in the situation, all that. As then we... Oh, see, these guys here are just kind of introduced there to be like the... The cannon part that's just going to die. You don't know, like, we have, like, that motto down, like, we have names of every single person in a part group just for them to be easily killed. It's like when they go in that whole Titan, Titan versus Neo humans. We had them be introduced just so the entire group except Alio could get killed off. We got that one of those captains introduced only so he could sacrifice an eye off. So I'm assuming these civilians from the Kaiju world, uh, this uh, douchebag's uh, sister's friend group are just there to be killed off. Probably just to show how vicious and violent the world is. That even, like, these young students are getting killed and br brutalized. So, yeah, I don't think we're going to have much with them. But all of them are saying they should go help the girl, even though, you know, the danger. You know, there's a very real possibility of a parasite there. So they really shouldn't be helping... As uh, Samuel and two other of the of her people uh, like agree with them, like they gave her like a pat in the hat, and they said, "Yeah, they are a bit more simplistic in their mindset. To them, it's if there's someone who's alive and is uh, well, the kin, one well, of the humans, they should go and help regardless of the risk." So she and two others go there, which I feel like is dumb. Like, like, it's like I get that they are like deciding what would be the best course of action. Like more people is better, but. There's a risk of parasites. And some of them are really like discouraging. It's like, so, like, if we get parasited, then we are getting parasited later. That's an issue for now. I don't know we should help her. As the, as the, the giants are going there, but, but, well, the people from the giant world, I'm going there, which, personally, I feel like it should be in the guys from the machine world because I don't, 
like, I don't know, like, I think it has to be, like, a skin conduct, because we do get to explain a little bit later how the process can work, but I feel, I feel like the guys from the machine world should be the best because of their armor and all their defense. But, yeah, anyways, uh, we have the giants going there, because no one wants to inform the dumb the guys who admit they are simple things. Like, literally, someone calls themselves, says that they have a lot more of a simple logic to their actions. But, like, even Samoa, who has been, like, I would say, like, one of the more intelligent ones so far, admits that. As they go help the girl, as then we get, like, a little distraction for a bit, as we uh, focus on the king, you know, like, who was, like, announcing the hero quest and all that. We have focus a bit on him as he's, like, starting to, like, control the, like, oh no, we can use the killing magic on the king! Pretty sure the general guy is the more in charge guy right now, but regardless, they go to the king... As the as the king tells them is he's dying like that man covered in black he put something in me as they're like wait did they, is he mean talking about that black guy the guy from the cursed land it's like wait where is he anyway is he not here by any chance as he um as the king dies and he uh, passes away no it's unclear if this means that the guy, if the blast that black guy Gave the king some the custom to get ill, or if uh, he gave something after he already was ill. But regardless, we have the king starting to contort a bit, like moving his corpse moving randomly. As the guys from the palace are around, like one puts out like an umbrella gun thing, Penguin would be proud. As he tells them, wait, everyone, he was infected by a parasite. If you, if he, if it comes out of you and the blood touches you, I'm thinking it must be a scam because I don't know why it's like a metal would if like metal would is not get prevented. Uh, but regardless, they said if you get in fact that you if you get blood and you you will be infected and you will die, die from and you become another carrier. As uh, uh, someone like wait wasn't he cursed by wait wasn't he cursed with the cursed lands? Which you know again I think there's gonna be a lot of thing with powers and like the cursed lands like some of these could be very similar facts. So it's like. If a demon has like a poison magic, is that going to be from a demon or is that going to be from the cursed lands? Because it's kind of like a thing that could be put, meshed together kind of thing. You know, it's kind of like, similar like the video game world and the uh, Android world. But regardless, uh, they don't re they can't, don't really have the time to clarify this. As I be, um, as I be, had this thought previously, like, if, like, when someone was going to go help that girl, being like, uh, what will Hollow do in this situation? He will, like, he will do the same thing as somewhere out there, because again, he said he's not really good at thinking, so it's similar case with the Giants. So Zai, so we again, like, immediately he needs to take action as he's like there with the king, as the king bursts, but uh, Zai immediately uses the cube spell, which blocks everyone in outside of him in it. So he's like, he's the only one that takes the parasite in. It's like a weird little, like, creature, like a Kind of like a parasitic, like, worm mouth thing comes off as he uses, like, freezing magic to freeze over it, but it's still covered in blood. Not entirely said that that is the parasite. Like, the parasite, I don't think the parasite, like, here from the parasite will, like, get closer to Chuck be like this. Is this one of those worms the parasite use? It's unclear, but maybe they, maybe it's gonna be like a thing they gotta find out later. Like, maybe they gotta look a, a bit at it a bit closely, but we're gonna be like, Wait, that's not how the parasites look like? We've examined multiple forms and they're not that. And so they're gonna be like, fire. oh wait, no, this is just a, one of the creatures that got developed from the Cursed Lands. So I mean, again, like, I don't think Zarbi is going to die this quickly. Like, I feel like, I feel like the Rider one does have at least a few characters who are gonna remain for a bit longer, and I think Zarbi is one of them. Like, anyone who was from the characters that were on the color page that we got, I think, for, the, for this month, I don't think it was a part of the chapter, it was a, an extra thing, where we had, like, a chap, we had a color page, we had, like, a bunch of characters in it, like, we have Hollow, Paka, Blast, and, and Zybe, and all those characters who, and, uh, Kiva, no, Kiva, Kiva, uh, the girl from the Machine World, like, all those guys were there, so it's kind of safe to say, so it's likely those are the main characters, kind of. At least that could be implied. Like a lot of them had more important roles to play, yet, so likely. And so I kind of feel like they might be the ones that are gonna be a little more allowed to. The same reason I think the fire lover is gonna be remaining as well. The general could probably die, but 
Again, we'll see how things are gonna play out in the story. But anyways, uh, Zybee then immediately is like, as well as this is all happening with Zybee, we rev they reveal that that uh, girl was indeed under the effect of the parasite, so she's trying to control and come out of it. While the gents are right, right next to it, I think, well, I think somewhere probably screams or something. As the as Zayabe, as that parasite kind of, I think, fuses with the other unconscious lawless into like one corporate abomination. As it strikes at uh, two of the giants, uh, Samora manages to dodge it, but again, it's also possible that she got infected by some kind of air or something. But then Zabi immediately is like, Oh my general guy, give me the pills! As Zabi is like, The pills are only gonna work! They only work if you think you, be, to prevent you from being infected. But then he's like, No, the black pills! Like, I need to, I mean, I'm gonna finish the pass and kill myself. Obviously, that's the most logical response here. As the general's like, Oh, I mean, if you wanna kill yourself with the pass, that's good, that's good for us. Like, we'll at least be all safe. Because again, like it's a trust thing, like to build up. Like, all right, you didn't keep, you kept that to yourselves for now. We are fine with that, but at least help us, like, get rid of the problem. So Zabi goes there and you and goes there to finish the uh, the monster. But unfortunately for Zabi, he real he finds out uh, that he's on two little mother, which is one of the sources that was with him when they were making that whole like, portal ritual spell. Uh, tells him, wait, uh, wait, you don't have your um. You don't have your. Uh, you have to few mana, like his vein popped. As he don't goes into blast head, but unfortunately for Zabi, he has so little mana, he loses consciousness, which is something that I think is always like depicted. Like, if you have too little mana, you lose consciousness. As then Zabi falls unconscious and he's like, oh shit. Well, at least I'm gonna. Oh, I guess I'm just gonna be a part of the Zai. No, this creature. I guess hopefully the other ones could destroy it because I feel like the cosmic and the machine could probably have enough firepower to obliterate them. But it. Um, luckily for Zabi, they don't even, they aren't even required because the lawless start shooting and firing at that parasite creatures as they completely obliterate it like quickly. Like they just like ride around and blitz it completely in seconds. As then we have ending the chapter off with the lawless save Zabi. As then we have like a group of lawless, like some of like the generic Mad Max looking guy, like, yeah, we are badass, yeah. But then they have like their leader, who's kind of like a cool looking handsome, like the pretty boy, with a katana. And if you know anime and manga, you know the guy with a katana is the most OP broken bastard in existence. So this guy, despite being a lawless, despite being something that so far seems to just be more violent humans, he's probably gonna be able to beat a kaiju. Probably decapitated in like five. In one strike, no, one hand tied behind his back, his eyes closed, and he will be the kaiju. Because that's just how the katana world works in modern anime. But, regardless, we'll see on how things are gonna go, which now has led to a lot of discussion, like, are the lawless gonna team up? Are the lawless just going to abandon? Are the lawless just going to enslave everyone? And making me laugh at the people who actually think there's something worse with human slavery to what to the demons and the new human slavery, but we will laugh about that stuff later. In a weird twist way, but regardless, we'll get into that later. Uh, I have I have a whole thing about how people I find the idea the fact that people are going to be more bothered with humanity enslaving is our chains, while we have stuff like devils enslaving humanity and using them like chess pieces, but that's the lesser form than the one that the lawless do. I find that idea hilarious, but regardless, we're gonna see what's going to happen here, how they're going to react and all that. I mean, I'm assuming that the lawless guys are gonna be a bit more explain what's going to happen. Like, I can see like the lawless leader kind of look at them a bit as uh, the giants go back, Hi, old man, what exactly is he doing right now? As he probably explained to them, Oh, he's violating, he's validating, he's checking us to see which ones could be for what type of, of um, enslavement. But, yeah. Anyways, that's it for this chapter. I'm assuming the zombie is going to be, issue is going to be solved. We're going to see what the laws are going to do next time. And we're probably going to get more of an impressive showing from them. Because, you know, this chapter, like, I'm sort of blaming the... Parasite, they haven't really, again, shown much strength. But yeah, anyways, uh, after that, we then have the penultimate chapter, we have the penultimate uh, chapter of the week, 
with Chainsaw Man Chapter 166 titled Rain Brothel Removal. Yeah, that removal is a bit extreme if you ask me. So, yeah, anyways, we started the chapter with the way we probably expected the, did it with how the last one ended up with Asa being Are you seriously, right now, offering us a brothel? He lost a family member. He's hungry. The last thing he needs now is banging, banging a woman. As she looks down, she's like, right? As then she's like really considering it, that considering it, it's like, I, I mean, I mean, I haven't masturbated in a while, so maybe that's what I need. Like, maybe banging a woman is what's gonna make me feel better. Maybe that's gonna make me be more reasonable, which, all I have to say to that is like, Danji, I think you're just losing your mind. Like, you, you lost your, fa you lost your pets, your place with, you, with the person, people who you were the closest to it. Then, you lost Naruto. You have no idea where she is. Is she alive? That no one could really give you an answer. Like, you, as far as you know, she could be be eight feet to the, in the bottom of the ocean, and you would not be able to know. Like, as far as you know, she already reincarnated somewhere, and you have no idea to know. And now you and now you live in a world where corpses are so common that people are just like, Oh yeah, someone's gonna clean it up in a few seconds, just give it time. Like, I think Danja is just losing it, honestly, at this point. As then, uh, uh, it also brings up, like, all the things that you should be way more concerned about than being, than bang a woman. And even goes on the disgusting pig before it, but then just trying to, like, no, no, it's physical, it's psychological. Like, when, my, my man, we all, we all agree. But fortunately for Danji, uh, the man that he's around with have no dick, so it doesn't matter. Like, do not have rat shirts over there real, expecting them to back you up on this front. But regardless, Danji, they go there to this brothel that Katana Man owns as it's revealed because, again, I think Danji is just like losing at this point. As they get to the brothel that he was in, but unfortunately for Katana Man, <laughs> They find out the buffer was completely destroyed, like, it was burned down, which is something they should probably have guessed. Like, F Family Last Chapter literally went through over the fact that the best place, the two best, best places are probably destroyed. Like, I think one was destroyed and the other one was burned to the ground, or she was speculating they might be burned to the ground, like, in that area there was, like, a lot of fire. So, yeah, it's not, like, a good thing. So, yeah, you can find guess the buffer was also going to be destroyed. Which is gonna be disappointing for some people because some people thought that Kobani was going to be in charge of it or a part of it because you know it's like one of the things she joined the devil extermination committee because she wanted to get money for her brother because it was a doubt of sex work but she didn't want to do sex work so yeah uh, but it, we don't even have that uh, discussion because Buffer is completely destroyed as a yeah. Your Asa is furious about this. Yeah, great. Now that this is destroyed, and now there's water. You know, and now it's raining. It's time for us to just go. Let's go just find any restaurant, any kind of place, and we'll eat it. Like, it doesn't even matter. Like, even if it serves sushi, it doesn't really matter. As Danji just falls to his knees, and just in the public place, and everything just starts to scream about be like, Damn it! Why am I thinking with my dick when Naruto is away? Like, why am I thinking like this? Like, why? Like, then just lost it. Like, let's be honest. So then he just completely lost it. All of this is just getting to him now, and he's just losing it in the most insane ways. Like previously, he was just in depression denial. Now they have to be under buried. Now he's just completely losing it. And now he's just blaming his dick for everything. As we see some people walking up, like, what is this guy talking about? Screaming about his dick and what not. And blaming it, and he's like, it's not fine. Like, if he removed this dick, if only I removed my dick, I would be able to function normal. I would not have stupid thoughts. As then, uh, as he says that, Euro pops up as soon as James Summon's dick is showing up. You're not beating the allegations, Euro. You are not beating them. As uh, Euro tells Danji, oh, if that's the problem, then come over there. I'm cutting it off. <sighs> I don't know how you play on cutting him off, Euro, but you are definitely giving uh, perfect wire uh, some ideas. 
as uh, we have Euro and uh, Danji possibly going to the alleyway to for Euro to cut it off. So we'll see if that's going to go through or something else is going to happen there. I mean, I don't know, I would say Mang would be kind of nice. <laughs> Better way to solve this issue if you ask me. <laughs> Which would be kind of fun that is how it results it. To think, you evolve that between us and Euro, you will be the one that would be jerking off Danji. <laughs> well, anyways, we're gonna have to wait and see and if this is gonna actually go the way we are. All of our purpose of thinking of this is just going to be a literal they kind of think of something is going to happen that will prevent it and get in the way. I mean, with how things are and how they've been moving, I would not be surprised if the Public Safety Commission shows up and to die again. But yeah, anyways, uh, with the Chainsaw Man out of the way, let's get into the other series, which is fun enough, also as horny as possible. Which is reincarnated at Coliseum, chapter 19. After a month of waiting, it finally got its English uh, translations. Titled, Risk Your Little Use. Uh, risk Your Life. Use the moment while it lasts. As we start this chapter off with, uh, again, Rin uh, Osuzo, I think it's a uh, made up name, being like. Uh, Figurious and becoming because in the last chapter he uh, said how me uh, how Musashi doesn't care about her and doesn't love her and all that. As Rin is you no know, angry and wants to go, oh previously I was just go previously it was just annoying. No, I'm going full out and she goes there to brutally kill him. As we have Rin and Mikami using their clone uh, magics, to, like slice and cut each other, but. Um, you know, it's a more, that strategy was kind of beginning boring, but now it's a bit more of an aggressive thing. Like, previously it was like, speed and mobile and n number advantages going up uh, by being kind of boring and still because there's like, like no movement. But now it's like, EXTREME! As then uh, they go into uh, their conflict. As uh, Mikami, uh, ha as Mikami goes over his new strategy. Now his strategy is be uh, make Rain lose her mind and become more furious so she'll get a so she'll drop her guard and fight more recklessly so he'll get an easier chance of getting a stab into her. So now he's like also possibly saying, alright. Right. So the clones do hear what I'm saying and they will re relay it back to the, her. So I just have to insult Musashi a lot and a lot. Uh, or refer to Musashi and how he doesn't love her and all that type of stuff and she will be furious enough to, for me to get like a good shot in at her. So they go into this little conflict and they go and then strike each other. Like they, they are mostly even it seems like the despite Mikami being inferior combatant he's able to like you know at least uh, counter the clones enough with his version attacks and speed and all that boost so they are able to like knock each other's clones off uh, which is at some point about even 10 because that's what the announcer states as they go into uh, they continue to cl clash with one another as then we had like another I think from I think it's another statement about the combo version 3 probably towards the readers who might have forgotten because I don't think version 3 has been stated before and although I think it has been stated before but I might be forgetting Oh god, they explain that it's like a combination of, like, they're using the fire combination they've been using to move quicker, but it's an inner body thing, so it's like, you're using it on your inside, it's not literal, but like, you're using it to, like, boost your speed and mobility and joints for faster reactions, which is something that, uh, that, uh, which is something Mary uh, used to, like, match Mus Musashi in their fight, and... It does say that this that while Mary has been trained and a warrior her whole life, she's actually only able to use it. Especially, I imagine it's more like a thing because it's a new thing that she learned right before. Well, not right before, but like this is a thing that she was using for a week only, and she has only so after a few more t year time. Of, so after a few more uh, days of training, she'll be able to use it more. But right now, it's limited to five minutes. Which is actually starting to affect uh, her vision and her general feelings towards it because she's like, oh my god, this is too long. I'm using it, I use it for far too long. Oh, I'm starting to lose consciousness. Oh, he's going for a few more blows. Uh, but regardless, uh, 
the thing that's important to note is that said Mary, who's a trained fire, can only use it for five minutes. While Mikami, a guy who's even been called out by his harem that while he beat them, he's the last person who should be talking about someone's physical capabilities in a combat that can't use it. Like, he can use it, like, I imagine it's like a few seconds. Like, I, okay, it's probably exaggerated, like, he can only use it for a second, though it's a meaning too much for him. I mean, because I do think he uses it a bit more, but it's like one of those things where it's, he can't use too much of it. But regardless, he can use enough of it. Uh, or the villains he used it good enough so he could get like a good shot in at Rin to uh, fatally wound her the same way how she fatally wounded him. Which is a which results in them being in a double knockout scenario where Rin is double like, How did I lose? How did this guy manage to snap uh, cut my throat? How how am I well, it doesn't matter. Rin basically tells herself like okay. Right, it's a tie. We both knocked out. out. I wound him severely, so he cannot do anything. He is out of it. So I can just read it. So one is down. I might be down as well, and I won't be able to have Musashi, but Musashi will beat her. Like, there's no way that Mary can beat Musashi's she, in a fight. So I did my part. It's a 1v1 now, and Musashi will finish it. So she's just ex justifying it. Like, oh, it's fine. Like, she has full confidence in Musashi. See, and she's pretty certain Mikami is out of it, because, you know, there's nothing he can do. Except there is, because Mikami is, while he is very wounded, he doesn't want to die. He refuses to die here. So, and this thing where he cannot, he himself cannot do anything, he on the other hand is able to do a, I would call the twice maneuver, where he makes a clone, or I think he uh, revives a clone, because I think they're all like slowly disappearing. And he has that clone going to go help uh, Mary in her fight, but, but as long but he needs to stay conscious. He has to stay alive. It's like one of those things where he doesn't disappear as soon as you. Uh, it's like so, doesn't disappear as soon as you use it. So he uh, makes the clone, and that clone goes to help Mary in the fight, which is um, good. And well, how how fight while well, he just lays there and refuse. With his pure willpower refuses to go down as uh, the clone goes there, as then Musashi is to fight one final grand attack to knock Mary out of Mary Van Stats, that final attack is going to beat her. Because remember, like, it's not like Musashi and Rin are inferior combatants, so this is like a power friendship, it's just, you know, they, it's totally dependent on, it's just that those two, you know, they're... They really need to be mentally put in a bad uh, position so she'll do foolish mistakes in combat. While Musashi needs to, if a man needs a good shot, at Musashi to knock him out because while he is powerful, you know, it's not. Call, Rinkai Coliseum hasn't exactly been the most insane in terms of scaling yet. So, and, so there's a higher chance for Mary to knock Musashi out just with uh, one good strike. And thanks to the uh, clone of Mikami, she got that opportunity because while uh, this, I think the attack that Musashi was giving was, I think, the uh, Musashi, the one that was uh, good enough to finish Mary off, was not directed inside Mikami's clone because Mikami's clone, I think, was saying an attack at him. Was saying an attack, uh, attack at him, so he destroyed that clone and that attack instead. Gave Mary open opportunity for Mary to use her final will, her final thought power to slice Musashi right in half as he uh, falls down. Which, consider the fact Mary seems to be more of a knight type of, well, more of a knight in terms of uh, armor and weapon. It's kind of surprising to see, since, you know, I think it's mostly anime, who is the reason, which is the reason why people think samurai would beat. Knights, even though in an actual fight, it's more likely the knights would be the samurai because of the armor, more armor, battle arm, battle metal, and general, like, in a more realistic setting, it would be knights beating samurai, while in anime, it's like, samurai beat knights, kind of thing. So, it's surprising seeing Mary beating a samurai. Well, in a traditional Japanese kind of way. But to be fair, I think like, it's more of a certain, certain jump series, so I think like it is more lesser, more likely to have characters be somewhere being beaten by knights. Although I guess Mary with her new outfit probably more of a paladin than a knight, but 
Regardless, Mary uh, beat uh, Musashi and cut him in half. As we have everyone reacting to this uh, conclusion, as everyone's like, uh, like, uh, the, and I was like, what? Uh, ev um, the fight is all done, and the only one standing is Mary. As they have the crowd cheering, while the guy who was um, in a before this fight told by Musashi, she, oh, actually, I think some guys were attacking Musashi. Uh, or no, no, actually, I think the crowd was just saying, oh, that's BS, that's not the real name, so whatever, because they were like newbies to this arena. But regardless, that guy was like told, oh, you should probably go there because we are stronger. And he was, I think, did see something that would make him think, oh, yeah, this is stronger. But now he has Musashi and Rin once again losing. Well, losing, so he loses money. They're like, I lost money again. Again, as then we have like, I don't think, uh, I don't think uh, the brawler and the assist and the helper are really that over the top without their victory. Like, they're happy, but like, well, who thought this is the way they're gonna end the fight of all ways? As then we have the Luna and the Giant as be like, Wow, that was my exciting fight! Well, bravo, Mikami! That man is one insane guy! As Luna just like caught being like shocked by this. I mean, like, wait, what just happened? Why well, Masashi and Suzu down? What's going on? As um, Giant has like picks up uh, Luna like a chubby. Like, well, sorry, Luna. It turns out that seat, that Zaya seat, is still too little, too early for you. Better luck next time. And she puts it on like la 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 la. Because again, I don't think this uh, th that she actually wants to like. She probably does want someone else to be on Zaya's seat, but I don't think she really wants any of these nobles. I think she just wants the, these nobles to uh, waste their money on a po fighters for Mikami and his harem to beat. So she could, you know, ban it. So she could, uh, I guess, get more power, more money. Like, I don't know. It's whenever you are dealing with characters who already have insane amount of power, insane amount of influence, they are most likely still going to want more and more and more, even though you, they don't really need it. So it's probably like this. But as, as the giantess leaves, Luna is like, but if they lost, but I paid so many people. I got money from so many idiots. I... Put, went into depth with so many people in the black market as she processes it and realizes oh shit she's in that but she has a figure no I'm in that which funny enough is not as over the top as you kind of expect like you know you expect some, some like it's over the top but it's not like uh, like uh, like it's not like a uh, lose, like having that losing your consciousness as foam comes out of your mouth, but still somehow losing it even more. It's more like, ah, I've lost a lot. It's more like a general panicky thing in, whenever it's like a bad situation. But regardless, Luna is in trouble. And deep, deep trouble. Because when she says she lost all her money, she was not kidding. Ding. Ding. I mean... Again, the Ross for the next chapter has already come out, and I'm kind of guessing it's going to be like a thing where the Ross will come out before the new English release chapter as well. But yeah, anyways, that's the... Um, but yeah, anyways, then we come to the final panels of the chapter where we have uh, Mary focusing back, back on Mary as she tells her how she loves Mikami because she knows that she couldn't win without Mikami and, you know, have them be more of a functional relationship. But regardless, that's the end of this chapter and this... Pretty exciting fight for a battle with samurai characters. But yeah, anyways, um, I hope you like this uh, video. I hope you leave your thoughts on, uh, on these on these chapters that I've reviewed this week. As well, as leave in the comments what you thought about these chapters in the comments below. How do you feel about Eden Zero and Academia coming in their fight, being in their final couple of chapters? And yeah, just leave whatever. If, Thoughts you have in the comments below. Don't no, with that said, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to this channel for more videos in the future. And with that said, I cannot wait to see all of you models next time. Goodbye.